If you're already editing your video in an editing software, then why should you have to switch programs to create your thumbnail? In this video, I'm going to show you how to create YouTube custom thumbnails in Premiere Pro. I'm Amanda Horvath and I'm all about helping business owners and entrepreneurs leverage the power of video without breaking the bank or taking up tons of their time. So if you're looking to use video in your strategy this year, then be sure to subscribe and click the bell to be notified every time I release a new video. What I'm about to show you is what I have found to be the simplest and most efficient way to create my thumbnails for YouTube. If you stick around to the end of this video, then I'm going to show you how I organize all of my thumbnails so they live in one place instead of being across all the different videos that I create in random folders. This took me months to learn myself, and so I'm happy to pass along the information to you in hopes that it might help you. So with that, let's dive into Premiere Pro. So I've gone ahead and I've imported a video file, and basically what I do for my thumbnails is I just roll video and I'll do several different poses, and I go through and I choose which poses I like, and then I add text to them. So we are just going to create a new sequence by clicking Command N. I'm going to do a 1080p and 24 frames per second sequence. We will call this thumbnail. Awesome. I usually call this the video number and then thumbnail after that. So we're just gonna go ahead and drag this on. My footage is 4K, so it's going to ask me this. I am going to keep the existing settings and I'm going to click set to frame size to make my 4K image the same size as my sequence. After you've made your sequence, you're gonna to wanna to go through your video file and find any of the favorite thumbnail options that you might like. So I'm just going to do that by scrubbing through, finding one that I like, and clicking M on the keyboard to create a marker, and I'll go through and find others that I like. Step two is going to be to add text to your image so that we can resize if we need to. Since I have 4K footage, I can resize. If you shot in 1080p, then you're not going to be able to resize your footage. And if you don't know what that means, then I'll show you in just a second. So in order to add text, you're going to go to your essential graphics panel. We're going to click on the type tool and just click anywhere on your screen. And if you don't have the essential graphics panel, you can go to window, essential graphics, and that will pop up. Then we're going to type, this video was about aperture and ISO. Let me redo that. All right, so we're gonna say aperture or shutter speed aperture and ISO. All right. A general rule of thumb is when you're adding words to your thumbnail, you want them to add context to your title. So the title of this video was how to get started with DSLR video, but when in the video I talk about shutter speed, aperture, and ISO. So I want the thumbnail to depict that because the keywords for those were already super taken. So now I'm going to add those on the screen and we will change the font by going over here. You can make that bigger by going like that. You could make it in the center. You can either use this tool to make it centered either to the middle of the frame horizontally and vertically, and then you can use these to kind of move it over, or you can just drag as well. So I'll just do it right there. And then if I would like to add something behind these to make them pop, then you go into here, you click rectangle, and you can position these over like that. Now you'll notice I'm covering up the words. So if I move the shape underneath here, then I can, I can see the words and I can adjust it as needed. And then you click on this fill right here and you can change your color. And once you already have your shape, then you could just right click and click duplicate, drag that down. And then over here, you can just drag it to the next. And you can go like that. And then I can duplicate that one, drag it below everything, put it there, make sure it's centered to the words, make them like that. Awesome. And sometimes what I'll do is I'll just select all of them and I'll click this horizontal center 
that aligns them to make sure that these boxes are truly in the center of the words. And then I can just move them back to the side like that. Once I've done that, then I want to move these words to all of the different options and see which one works better. So all you have to do in order to duplicate this is you're going to hold down option and then you'll just drag and it will duplicate the file and then we'll duplicate there as well. And so when you go here, you can see the next option. So this one right here, I'm looking at the screen, I could reposition this to be, you have to select everything if you wanna move everything, to be within my hands and I might wanna actually zoom in a little bit on this one because the words are kinda of getting cut off. And I don't wanna impact this image over here, so what I'll do is I'll just make a cut right there by using my razor blade tool. Click there, go into this, and I will size up using the effects controls. Just kinda of zoom in a little bit. Once again, if you have 1080p footage, you won't be able to do this, but if you're shooting your footage in 4K, then this is an option for you. And the iPhone shoots 4K, so keep that in mind. And then I can kinda of go down like that, and that is another option. And then I'll go check out what this one looks like, and this one will also need to be resized, so I can just click, make it a little bigger. Let's see. This one might be a little trickier. I might need to move my words up because I don't want to cut off my arm. So I'll go like that. I'll select this and go to Essential Graphics. I'll select everything and just kind of drag it to where you see the finger like that. So that is a good positioning. Awesome. Once you've positioned your words, then you are going to make sure to color your image before exporting. So the way that we're going to do that is I'm just going to lasso all of the text, I'm going to drag that up to the second layer. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to create an adjustment layer. I will click OK and you don't need to name that anything. Just drag the adjustment layer down here. Make it the length of your video. And the reason we're doing an adjustment layer rather than adding color to these individual clips is because we've added these cuts. If you wanted to add it directly to your clip, you could just delete the cuts and add it directly to your clip you do you. So what I'm gonna do is click on adjustment layer and then you'll want to open Lumetri Color. You'll go to Lumetri Color and I usually up the contrast, lower the blacks. I like to, it to be super bright so I up the whites a little bit. I go under creative, I up the vibrant so it's real nice and colorful. And that looks pretty good. In order to see what I did, you can check this. And that looks pretty good. When creating these thumbnails, you really wanna make sure that you're not using the video footage as the main ingredient for this project file. You want to be using exported still images. So we're gonna get there in just one second. But the reason that you wanna do that is because say later on you've done tons of videos on your channel and you wanna go back and kinda of change the style of your thumbnails, then it would be a total pain in the butt to have to go back and find that still part of the video file and re-export it in order to change the words on the screen. So what we're going to do is we are actually going to export a still image of the option that we really like, and then we are going to add the words back onto it after we've re-imported that still image. So here's how you do that. First, we are going to drag all of these off over there because we don't need them, and we will click this right here. It says export frame. If you don't have that, you can click on this plus button right here and drag it just by dragging and dropping down to here. I have it, so I don't need to do that. Then you'll click export frame and you'll name this thumbnail, thumbnail option one. And you can choose where you would like to, to save that. So we will kind of go over this part later. For now, I'm just gonna do it in test project. Click choose and you can select this import into project. So I will select that and I'll click okay. All right, it's imported and we will do that for all of the other videos or options as well. So thumbnail, option two, okay. 
and thumbnail option three. Okay. All right. And now in order to organize this project file, this is just a generic thing that I always do. I'm going to create a bin. I'm going to call this 01 sequences, create a second bin called 02 footage. Perfect. And we are going to drag all of these into this. And then this is a sequence. So we'll drag that up to, oops, sorry. That is the video file. We'll drag that into footage and this is the sequence. So we'll drag that into sequences. And then it doesn't necessarily make sense for this project, but 04 graphics is another folder that I include. 03 is usually for music. So we don't have music in this case. So this is how I organize my project files. Now you have the actual image imported rather than having the video file. So we can go ahead and delete the video file. It's going to ask you, do you want to do this? Because it's in your sequence and you are going to say, yes, I do. And then you don't need the adjustment layer either because we've exported it with the color correction added. You can delete that and we will go ahead and drag all three of these down into the sequence. You can go ahead and clear all markers by right clicking up here and going to clear all markers. And then we are going to drag these back into this area uh, just move them to be close to each other. And now we have one, two, and three thumbnail options. So the very last step is to export your thumbnails. So now we'll click export and we'll call this thumbnail one. And we are going to browse and choose where to save those. Now, once again, I will go over this soon with you, but I like to create a export folder and I will save them all into there. And I don't need to import these into project because I just need them in Finder. So I will uncheck that, click OK, go here, thumbnail two, and I usually say video X thumbnail two, whatever video this is, just so because you're going to be creating a video, a thumbnail for every single video. So you want to stay as organized as possible with this. So. For now, we'll just say thumbnail two, just for the test project. And this is thumbnail three. Awesome. And then when you go to your finder to the test project, you'll see that we have all of our thumbnails ready to go. As promised, I want to show you how I organize all of the thumbnails so that they don't get all crazy and they're not living in all of these individual project files. So the way that I do that is there's a 2019 folder for thumbnails that I have and I organize it like this. And under footage, I have it organized by month. So whatever videos I've created that month, these are all the options for that I could potentially use whenever I imported them into Premiere. As we did here, we had three options. So those all live within there. That makes it super, super easy to redo any thumbnail should I choose to go back and change my style. Then under the exports folder, it's organized the exact same way. And I just have the version that actually has the text and the one that I ended up with, I always go ahead and just label it blue. So it's really easy to find. So hopefully that is helpful to you. If it is, please go ahead and click like so YouTube knows and drop a comment below. In fact, just to make this super easy, why don't you go ahead and drop a comment below with how you currently are creating your YouTube thumbnails. And with that, I'll see you in the next video.